Well, last week we roughed in all the plumbing on our project house and got all the pipes covered up and ready to go to what a lot of people consider the most important part of home building, and that's pouring the foundation. This is a backbone to our whole house, and if we have problems with this foundation, we're going to have problems with the rest of the house. Plus, it's going to be expensive to repair anything that goes wrong with the foundation, so we've got to do it right. Now we're building the project house this year in Dallas, Texas, and where we're at has a lot of expansive clay soil. When it rains, that soil can actually expand and rise maybe five, six inches. When it dries out in the summertime, that soil contracts back and forth. So that's a lot of motion going on beneath our foundation. So we've really got to build it right. Now this is a 16,000 square foot house, so we really went overboard to do it right. How far overboard? Well, we started by drilling holes for 128 concrete piers down to the bedrock. These piers will stabilize the foundation so it isn't floating on a shifting sea of expanding and contracting soil. The piers go down from 20 to 37 feet, depending on where the drilling rig hits the blue shale bedrock. Then just to be sure, the crew drills one additional foot right into the rock. Each pier is one foot in diameter. After the crew drills the holes for each pier, the area around the hole is cleared of all debris so nothing falls back into the hole. Then the crew marks the spot inside the hole where the top of the pier is to be. This spot is exactly 28 inches below what's going to be the surface of the concrete slab. Now it's time to pour the concrete into the pier. The concrete must not fill the pier hole to a level above the blue tag. If too much goes in, it must be taken out. The top of each pier has to be the exact same level. When the pier hole has been filled with concrete, two 20-foot lengths of steel rebar are placed into the pier for reinforcement. Earlier, the crew set form boards on the perimeter of the slab. These boards follow the exact outline of the foundation. The crew is putting such strong support on the outside of the form boards because these boards will have to contain thousands of pounds of concrete on the day the foundation is poured. But we're not there yet. Now the crew digs a grid work of deep trenches for the concrete beams. The beams will rest on the piers, so the trencher must be sure to cut the trenches right above where the piers are. Once the beam trenches are dug, the plumbers will come in and rough in the plumbing. When the plumbers have finished, the foundation crew comes back and fills in the trenches that the plumbers dug, then recuts the trenches where the concrete beams will go. The crew evens out the base for the concrete slab, removing dirt where necessary and adding a layer of fine cushion sand on top. Now the foundation begins to look like a giant waffle. A layer of plastic is put on top of it all to act as a moisture barrier between the sand and the concrete. Next, a grid work of long steel cables sheathed in plastic is laid out. These are called post-tension cables and they'll be buried inside the concrete. After the concrete is poured, these cables will be pulled tight like a tennis racket to give the foundation extra strength. Now our post-tension cables are no benefit if they're below the concrete foundation. They need to be in the concrete. So the guys add these little plastic chairs and they just clip right onto the cable. And then the cable sets down on top of it like so. That way when you have the weight of the concrete or anybody stepping on it while they're working on the foundation, it's right in the center. It doesn't go below the concrete. It's right where we want it to be. So when we stress it, it'll pull it all together. Besides the sheathing for our cables, you also see this gray conduit. This conduit is actually for a floor outlet, an electrical outlet that we're going to plug lamps into. We're a long ways away from a wall, but we are going to have furniture right here, and we're going to need some table lamps, so we're putting the electricity right where we're going to need it in the floor. This will be the surface of the floor, and the electrician will come back in, take this cover off, and go ahead and install a normal outlet cover. Much less expensive to do it now than it is to do it later. You see our big trenches and beams here, and down in the bottom you can see actually the top of a concrete pier. Now remember we drilled those down and filled them up with concrete. Well now when we pour our big pour for our complete foundation, the concrete's going to go down in these beams and sit on top of those piers to help hold the weight. And these beams actually form what's known as a mat foundation. The purpose of a mat foundation is to spread the weight of our foundation and of our house over a large area, much like a snowshoe. If you walk out in the snow, your feet sink down in it. You put on snowshoes, you stay on top. We're doing the exact same thing with the foundation. Looks like they pretty much got it ready, so now it's time to pour the concrete. The foundation of our project house will take 350 yards of concrete. That's about 40 trucks full. On the day of the pour, everything has to go like clockwork because as soon as the concrete comes out of the pump trucks, it begins to harden. 
Concrete is a mix of cement, water, sand, rock, and other materials that can be blended together in an endless number of combinations, depending on what kind of concrete you want. For the project house, we're using what's called a five sack mix. That's five sacks of cement per cubic yard of concrete. This mix will harden to handle a load of 3,500 pounds per square inch. One yard of our concrete mix has roughly 375 pounds of concrete, 1,800 pounds of rock, 1,500 pounds of sand, 30 gallons of water, and 95 pounds of fly ash. The fly ash interacts with the cement in a chemical reaction so the concrete will keep gaining strength year after year. As the pour goes on, a member of the crew goes around the perimeter tapping the form board to settle out any air pockets or honeycombs that may have occurred. Other members of the crew rake the surface of the concrete with a metal drag bar so that the surface of the slab is perfectly level. As the concrete begins to harden, the crew smooths and trowels the surface and for a final touch, they give the surface a once over with a troweling machine to even out whatever humps, dips, and ridges remain. The whole job from start to finish has taken just under five hours. Well, it's hard to believe by looking at it, but it's been one week since we poured the concrete foundation. And as you can tell, a lot of work's been going on, the frame's been going up. The guys have come back on our post-tension cables and pre-tensioned the cables the day after the pour. That means they put some pressure on it to pull that concrete together because the nature of concrete is it's gonna crack. This cable pulled it all together. They put about 3,500, 3,800 pounds of pressure on the cable. Here's how they do it. Steve's doing the post tension right now a week later. They hook a ram to it, and that ram pulls on that cable and pulls it out. There's two wedges they've installed inside there so the cable doesn't back in. And they're taking it up to about 7,800 pounds of pressure. That's what the engineer called for, the structural engineer who designed this foundation. It's a big foundation, but that's a lot of pressure. By pulling it together, we add a lot of tensile strength to the concrete. The more you can compress the concrete, the stronger it's going to be and the less problems we're going to have in the future. We shouldn't have any major cracks come apart on this. The foundation should stay in one complete piece. That means our walls will look good. We're not going to have a lot of drywall cracks or anything like that. But we don't leave it here. We're not going to walk away looking like this. Sean's about to come in with the saw and we're going to cut all these cables off and mortar over it so it looks just like the rest of the foundation. With 128 piers over 20 feet deep, plus a matte foundation and the post tension to pull it all together, we should have a solid foundation that'll last many generations to come. Mm -hmm.